This week on Chicago Beer Pass, Nick and I are talking about Naperville Ale Fest, Square Roots, the Maplewood Tap Room, and then we dive into some of the events happening this week, including Slick Rick performing over at Temperance. All that and more on this week's episode. Cause you know, you got a court clock out, boop, the other flies like fucking 10 feet. We're like, yeah, let's do it. The legend, Mr. Pete Crowley. I, I, I love Pete Crowley, man. I, uh, how's, that, how's that beer? It's what you think it is. It'll, it'll be like the stuff you hear. You ever go to, every time you go to Floyd's, all the music sounds like this. Raw, raw, raw. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to Chicago Beer Pass. I'm Brad Chmielewski. Brad, what's up, man? I'm Nick Way. And we're here. I don't, I don't even have and a good. We're here. I don't even have a good. We're just here drinking, like we are every week, man. Every it's, it's Tuesday, man. Tuesday. You know, we. I like to break the week up. Got the with, podcast. With a little Tuesday drinking, yeah. man. You know, <laughs> take some of the edge off, man. You know, life. Life gets in the way and fucks everything up. I but do. Tuesdays, they and always end up okay. Yeah. You know? uh, and you have brought a bottle that you picked up from Goose Island. Yeah, man. I haven't. I couldn't tell you the last time I've been to Fulton. Okay. What, maybe like a year ago. Okay. Yeah. I try to stop in like every once summer. in a while. It's usually pretty busy. Tours, lots of out-of-towners. That's what they asked me when I first got there, like the little host stand. Yeah. Like, what's up? You here for a tour? I'm like, no, not at all. I know how you make beer. I've <laughs> seen it here. I've done it all. But thanks. Thank you, though. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, so what is this What is this beer? I think you mentioned it last week. Yeah, right on, man. So this is uh, Fooder Red 2018. So... Uh, first of all, man, shout out to the little, uh, it's 500 milliliter bottle. Yeah. So cute and adorable. But then also the little bunt in the bottom. Well, I don't know why that brings me joy. But, you know, like. For the wine holders, right? Yeah, right? for the wine holders, for the presentation, you know, okay. if you want to be fancy. But I think this is the first time they've actually had a tap only, I'm sorry, uh, brewery only release, I think. They're saying this is their only one. Oh, really? They didn't do, um, I thought they did a couple of the other ones at that. The pub, but maybe they weren't brewery only. Maybe they're just selling them yeah. there. I think maybe like in the past, their stuff was just like on tap only there. Okay. Right, but this is like the only time where you could. It was in a. It was packaged, but you can only get it here. Oh, okay. Uh, I think that's what they were saying. Yeah. So it's um, it's food or red. So it's like a. Uh, it's an okay's red ale, mm-hmm. reminiscent of an uh, Ode Brun. I never know if I'm saying that right. I wish so, somebody would correct me. Sounds right. <laughs> Ode Brun. <laughs> but um, yeah, man. So like um. Uh, ate six months in the fooder mm-hmm. and then transferred to a barrel, a bourbon barrel, and aged for 12 months. Okay. Yeah. So you're talking about a year. Like the project they said took four years. It was four years of planning. Because fooders are, you know, this fooder Solera system isn't easy. You're right. But okay. then, and then almost two years to make the beer. So. Jeez. Okay. So. Uh, well, did they say what kind of bourbon barrels they were? Mm. No, but my guess is that they're, um, my guess is that they're second use bourbon county barrels. Which my understanding is like they used to be used, um, but uh, like previously used uh, Heaven Hill barrels, but I now I think they're fresh Heaven Hill barrels since the twenty fifteen or sixteen. Oh, so section they're thing. not even they're not even getting that bourbon burn from them. They're not getting bourbon in there because they're fresh barrels. No, no, no. Fresh just means like they weren't they they weren't spent at all. Oh, uh, okay. You know what I mean? Like they they just came directly from the oh, brewery. Oh, okay, okay. Like like the brewery didn't do. That whole devil's cut thing where they empty the barrel and then like fill it with a little water and then try to and then try to um like get more moisture out. Yeah. Like the barrel, they didn't do any of that at the distillery. Oh, okay. They okay. dump the barrel and then now it's fresh. Like a fresh dump, give me the barrel and then I'll do what's next. I don't want you doing anything after you dump the whiskey. Yeah, don't mess with it. Okay. So fresh in that and that. Okay. Not like fresh new barrel. No, not like oak, not like a new oak barrel. Okay. No. But that no, but that's you're right. Because the way we're saying it, especially over voice right it could be confusing yes right? yeah <laughs> uh so they you think they're reused bourbon county barrels yeah and okay. i saw i'm gonna pull this up i saw this somewhere oh like, what kind oh, of exactly barrels they were what kind of barrels it was okay yeah because the system's actually a little more complex than i gave it credit for it the uh, fooder the um yeah uh, okay uh well then i'll i'll crack it open while you All look right, for cool. this um, so it looks like there was only a little over 2,000 bottles released. Nick got number 32 here. Yeah, so it sounds like um, we were at the pub, and it was uh, 20 kegs that mm-hmm. they, they got distributed. Or they, they have 20 kegs as a result okay. of this process, right? 
So food or red, they're calling it a Solera system, right? Which is where you um you create a system of barrels for the whole purpose of uh, like continuous growth and inoculation. Right? Okay. So uh, they got these they got these barrels, and then they inoculated them with Madame Rose, right? So it sounds like you're kind of like taking oak, putting Madame Rose in it, right? Okay. And then creating that microbe environment for beer, mm-hmm. right? And then there's like a, and then, and then I'm looking at this thing and it's like, all right, there's a mother inoculation that takes four to six months, and then eighty percent of that is drained, right? And then, then that's put in a bourbon county cask. So yeah, so it wasn't okay. it wasn't fresh oak. I just we just lied basically. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, we got we got the lowdown now. <laughs> right. So then they um they took it from the fooder and then they put it in bourbon county cask. So okay, I guess that would be. Second use. Second use, yeah. Second use whiskey barrels. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that previously held Bourbon County and before that held whiskey. Makes sense. Yeah. Nice. Right. Uh, so it's going to be reminiscent of Madame Rose then, right? Yeah, I think yeah. so. I think okay. so. Yeah. And I think um, what it sounds like is they're trying to make a beer that kind of reminds you of the sisters. And the sisters are beers that had like thousands of pounds of fruit added to them. Mm-hmm. Make a beer that reminds you of that w- without using any additional fruit or anything. Okay. Right. I think that's what they're going for. Okay. Nice. Yeah. yeah it's got that funky oak. Just kind of like a, a little bit sweetness, but almost like a burnt kind of aroma too going on. Smells great. Looks like Madame Rose. Looks just like Madame Rose. Uh, dark mahogany, like big luscious head. Mm-hmm. A lot of lot of ripe fruit when you when you smell it. Oh, that uh, Madame Rose has this uh, puckering tartness that happens. This doesn't have that, and it still has all the same flavors that you might find from it. Yeah. Um, so it sounds like um, you know, as part of this process, this is an ode to like kombucha brewing and an ode to like artisanal vinegar producers, right? Mm-hmm. And then, like, in this process of all the Solera and the, uh, and what is it, the fooder system, they actually add fresh beer into the process. Okay. So that's why it's only, like, 6, 6.6%. And then it's also it's actually got kind of, like, a pretty clean finish for it to be, like, a, a, a beer that sat in oak for, like, all of its life. Yeah. Right? Um, but oh. You get that same, like, uh, mouthfeel, end of the taste as Madame Rose. That's almost, like, slick feeling in your throat and then like i can tell you like if i get one of the sisters it's more like a breakfast beer but then like to your point like it's always it's almost it's always like almost more acidic than you want it to be Mm -hmm. but then also because of all the fruit it can be kind of almost too perfumey oh yeah you know this just kind of takes like the best of madame rose and then just kind of like it's the minimalist version of that beer without using fruit yeah which i think that's the part i dig about it mm-hmm. yeah i could see this being good uh fall campfire beer yeah because it has that like we said that oak kind of aroma going on and you just almost just want want to warm up with it it's kind of weird we're drinking this in the summer but it's just released so uh, yeah um yeah big mostly tart fruit Really kind of like ripe fruit when you smell it, but then kind of like a little creaminess and then like a little like, mm-hmm. I don't know, vanilla, reminiscent of vanilla, not really vanilla. But, but still that, uh, that like frothiness, the creaminess. Maybe that that's what, I, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like the mm-hmm. creaminess kind of reminds me of vanilla. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Nice. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, you said the bottles were only like $8. Which so. was kind of a surprise. Yeah. Cause yeah. the beer took like two years to make. Yeah. Awesome. So um, um, if you can make it over to Goose Island, the Fulton spot, see if they still have some bottles. Um, otherwise, I don't know. You're kind of out of luck then. Yeah. And then they, they came up draft. with this, uh, this nice packaging, um, only 20 kegs of it. And um, yeah, only 2,300 bottles of it. Mm-hmm. And man, on a summer day, like, we, you know, we had, we parked like a block, two blocks away. Yeah. And it was like 90 degrees when we got in there. Oh, they served it in the elegant chalice that I haven't seen in a while. Oh. Which is really, that's part of the reason why I fell for Goose is because you go to like, <laughs> like what, Clivemore and you got that really cool, you know, what, what Sophie and uh, all this other. The Matilda and, kind and of the, glass? Yeah, the Matilda's yeah. kind of. Yeah, it came in kind of glass. And it was cool to get over there, man. I haven't been over there in a long time. Uh huh. When was the last time? I was was it busy? I think you said you went on a 
what thursday or friday um yeah i went on like a friday afternoon mm -hmm. um it was pretty full like no more seating um except for this one spot in the corner that has some barrels okay and then we saw a bench so then we just chilled on the bench oh right but next to the 312 uh, vending machine oh there's a vending machine there's a vending it? machine and the only is <laughs> in this like old school soda machine and the only thing you can get is 312 regular or dry 312 regular yellow black yellow right, yellow yeah <laughs> I was like, dude, who's got a quarter? I need to see if this thing works. Uh -huh. It didn't work. No. no. They told it. We didn't have a quarter, we, but we asked. They are like, no, nah, it doesn't work. I was like, man, that'd be cool because, go on, 312 for a quarter, I'm going to get a 312. Right. They should have that block party, their 312, well, not 312 block party, but yeah, the, the right? 312 block party coming up here soon. Block party. Yeah. Uh, it's usually in the middle of the summer. They usually have some bands, but they've got other bands this weekend, so we'll be diving into that here in a little bit talk about that then we got the little something something easy i wasn't sure if this was going to be too tart which yeah. is always rough when you're doing a podcast True. you have a tart beer so we got a little chaser with some something easy yeah uh classic american muscle on the uh it's like an orange like muscle car from yeah. the 70s <laughs> <laughs> on the little something easy little something easy is a great summertime crusher. yeah definitely yeah cool well Nick, you made it over to Goose Island. You make it anywhere else then uh, this past week? Man, you know, I went out to uh, the 6th Annual um, Naperville Ale Fest. You made it. I made it. First dude. time. Here, uh, Man. Finally. I was excited to be there, man. Did you train it or drive? Man, you know, it was Metro all day. Okay. Yeah, it's about uh, it's about a mile from the Metro. So, you know, we kind of, we, we we cabbed it over. Okay. You know. Did you pregame it on the Metro? Yeah, you know, we got there early because, you know, Saturday schedule is not an hour. Usually it's every hour out right. there, but not on Saturday. Okay. So we ended up an hour early and we chilled at um the Craftsman, mm. which is uh, downtown Naperville, Two Brothers location. So first level is a coffee shop with a deli in the back. Second level is a restaurant, like family restaurant. Third level is like a speakeasy with a patio. Oh, cool. So we're like, bring it on. It's fucking noon. This party doesn't start till one. Let's get yeah. to this rooftop. They were like, nah, bro. The, uh, it doesn't open till two. What? I'm like, that's pretty whack, but it's city rules. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So we, we chilled on the first level, but they did have six beers on tap. Okay. I think we ended up going for cocktails, though. Okay. Yeah, well, you were about to drink a whole bunch of beer, right? Yeah, but you know, it's kind of stressful going all <laughs> God, I sound like such a diva. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we were on a train for an hour, so we're like, "Listen, we're gonna get right. We're yeah, gonna, we're gonna cross our legs, charge our phones in these leather chairs. We're gonna get some fucking cocktails, and then we're gonna go to the party." Okay, so Fair that's enough. that's how we did it. Nice. Yeah. Well, what what do you think of Naperville Ale Fest? This was a Lou Dog event. Yeah. Um, so the first thing I do when I get there is I run into the Guinness guys. You know. Okay. And then I'm like, "Have you guys been to this before?" He's like, "We went to the winter one." I'm like, is it here? He's like, no, the winter one is in like a big parking lot. Okay. You know, not this place at all. So this is like the neighbor settlement, they call it, is like this, um, it's a collection of old buildings that, you know, that I guess the, the city was founded on, right? Mm -hmm. So you're surrounded by these buildings and it's this big sprawling park with really nice grass. Right. And, um, and a lot of trees. It's actually a really nice backdrop, mm -hmm. right? It was and like then, a hill, right? Is it not yeah, a hill? Yeah. It's like, these, it's like the sweeping kind of scenery, Yeah. you know? Yeah, and I mean, and it's a proper fest, man. They got everything, like, you know, really big lawn chairs, you know, like, almost like, like ridiculously big. Like, so the, most of them are like normal size, but then they got like one or two that are like, you know, maybe like 10 feet, like big, <laughs> <laughs> All right. like big giant, <coughs> sorry, like big giant chairs to, okay. to chill in. Oh, and then every western suburban, s south suburban brewery that I've never been to is there. Okay, so, so you, were you trying all those, or did you... Oh, so you know I'm on a mission for that, right? Yeah. Because that, that's, you know, <laughs> I feel like that's why I'm here. Because, you know, like, everyone's kind of bringing their stock stuff, unless you go to the Vipberry, which I didn't make it to. Okay. Um, but for me, like, a lot of their stock stuff is stuff I don't never, I never get to. Right. The so I'm like, fuck it, let's bring it. Short Fuse. Exactly, uh, yeah. So, and then... Okay, if I think of all these names, Monkey Paw, no, Metal Monkey. No, <laughs> Metal Monkey. There will be, there probably is a Metal... metal Monkey yeah. and a monkey paw and uh even <coughs> even crews like Salamo. The only time I had Salamo was on the show, and then um oh Old Town Abbey, they're oh, in a, okay. see they're in Glenview. They well their contract brand. I'm like, are you guys in Old Town? He's like, we're looking for a spot. We're in a, we're in uh we're brewing with uh 1090 up in Glenview. Okay. Yeah. Oh, but they had a really nice um they had a wheat ale with lemongrass. Nice. Okay. And the lemongrass was such a big pop like. 
mm-hmm. big mid palette pop of like this lemongrass candy. That yeah. was, it was nice. That that was one of my favorites of, of the people I hadn't had before. I can't remember the last. There was for a while this lemongrass beer going around. It seemed to be at all the fests. I can't even remember who it was now, but yeah. lemongrass beers making a comeback. It was nice, man. It was nice. Um, I was pleasantly surprised. I went with uh, went with that for beer chick. She first beer she picked out was uh, this North Coast beer. It was a passion fruit and peach Berliner Weiss. It's not even going local. No. Let's bring on the West Coast. All Fort right. Bragg, North- California. Yeah, North Coast is always good. <laughs> yeah, they're solid. I remember when we went to um, when we did the show from uh, what's that spot? Um, the Jeff Vander Tuck spot, not Dusix, but his first spot. Oh yes. Um, off the Mag Mile. Um, side door. To, side door. Thank you. Yeah, attached to Lowry's Steakhouse. Um, oh, but that spot is the top account in the state for North Coast oh, for my. for uh, Crim, for the Scrimshaw Pills. Yeah. Top, top account of state. Oh, but this peach for lemon rice was money, dude. Mm-hmm. money, because it was a little muggy on that day. So that right, was, yeah. That was really good beer. Summer afternoon, that sounds good. Uh, the Hook and Hatchet, which is the gold medal World Beer Cup winning beer from uh, Midnight Pig. Mm-hmm. Um, now they're making that year round. I was excited to get a hold of that. You know, I had to get some, uh, some, 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 uh, <laughs> some haze from uh, Noon Whistle. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I, I hit that maybe once or twice. Uh, a few crews I hadn't heard of before. Uh, Tangle Roots, who I see all the time. Their pale ale was solid. Mm-hmm. Um, I tell you, probably my favorite one of the stuff I hadn't had outside of old old Town Abbey was um, Unity Vibration. I didn't know. Yeah. They're up in Michigan. They're like this oh. um, kombucha, all natural, kind of hippie crew, right? They had this uh, bourbon peach, raw vegan kombucha tea that they barrel aged in whiskey barrels with organic peaches. How was that like the, probably the biggest sign for that description of that beer or that <laughs> drink? It was, it was, um, <laughs> what I liked about this party was that there were, it was, it was, a, a, it was, they had a lot of different things going on. Yeah. So there was like Cider Alley and then there was like the House of Funk, which is where this thing was, the House oh, of cool. Funk. There was a Christmas in July tent where they had um, like an anchor uh, winter beer essentially. Uh, and right. That's kind of cool. And then they had a VIP tent on it in the back. They had the food, food central, which is like the food section was almost as big as where all the brewers were. Oh, cool! Like this was a massive like food space. trucks or yeah, tents. All food trucks. Okay. So some of the um, some of the guys you know, you know, like uh, the lobster and you know, yeah, the lobster. I hate the way they spell it, but it's good. <laughs> if you know, you got twenty bucks, you want to spend it on a sandwich, you go to the lobster and you'll be and, you'll be yeah. Right. Lobster rolls are uh, unnecessarily <laughs> expensive. They're good. Damn, why are they so expensive? Like, yeah. come on, we need, to, we need to figure out this lobster thing. It's kind of yeah. <laughs> couple brews, a uh, couple crews I hadn't had before: uh, Forge Brewing, Forge oh. Brewing down in the Calb. Okay. And then uh, Siri Athlone. Hmm. Yeah, Siri spelled S E E R Y. Okay. Athlone, A T H. Where are they at? Um, fuck, I should have wrote that down, Brad. Okay. They're they're like. They're somewhere like on the in the burbs or down mid state or something. Okay. Yeah. They had a couple beers. Um, yeah, it was all right. But I didn't know that they existed. Yeah. So, okay. I mean that that's really what I was getting at. So it was a chance to do those kind of things, man. Yeah, that's good that you made it. You weren't drinking the the Lagunitas, the It was hard, dude. After you know, cause like um the I get a spitefuls, text. the half acres. Right. <laughs> So she texts me. She's like, uh, "I just ordered the food. Food's here." So I'm like, "Fuck, what I'm getting at?" Maple Woods right there. I'm like, "Well, let me get two. Let me get. <laughs> let me get two Maple Woods." But that was the only time I was really trying to like get to stuff I hadn't seen. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's tough. Like we have said at those festivals, you like, you want to say hi to the people you know or hit up like, "Oh, I know that beer's safe. That Maple Wood beer. That's uh, Salmo beer or whatever." And yeah. so then you end up like, "Crap, I didn't drink." Any of these beers from these breweries I haven't heard of. So. Yeah, Salamoth had the my favorite booth. Their um, their presentation was just as massive and then like full and everybody was happy. Oh, but they also did a collab. They did a um, Blood Orange collab with Naperville Elf Fest. Oh, cool. But I tell you, man, that Miskatonic IPA was sneaky good. Oh, nice. And it was so fresh. Oh, cool. It was great. So that was a good party. I'm glad I went. That's awesome. Yeah, if you hadn't been, we were talking about it last week that neither of us had made it out there. Um, I don't think you made it out there for the winter one either. So I've, never, I've never been to that party. Either fest. No. I haven't done it. That was good, man. Nice. Uh, anything else you hit up or was that the main thing? I just went to Half Acre. Nice. Okay. Yeah. You know, they are slowly becoming like, because, you know, 
they kill it with IPAs. We talk about how excited we are that you get five IPAs from them, and they all legit have like five different profiles. Yeah. Right. They pull a lot of flavors out of IPAs. But um, these mixed culture ales, there were, there were three of them on draft. And two of them were, you know, have been packaged. You know, mm-hmm. one was Yanari, the other one was like Bon Hut. Okay. So we got the Yanari, which was like, um, you know, a satin French oak for nine weeks. Right. Hmm. And, you know, we, just to set it up, like, I've been, we go to the beach uh, in summertime, right? We're at the beach. If it's yeah, for me, if it's, it. if it's over 80, I'm at the beach. We drop everything, we go to the beach. Hmm. And, you know, we've been drinking a lot of Prosecco lately at the beach. Okay. And they made this beer, and I'm like, this beer tastes just like this Prosecco we've been drinking at the beach. And I was kind of surprised by that. Because usually you go to like off color and get some cool cocktails or get some fun, kind of funky, you know, some wood eight sour stuff. Okay. But then he's had half acre had like three really legit options on on the mixed culture ales. And so they're kind of they're becoming like somewhere but they're 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 slowly becoming equal parts off color and revolution because of because of the volume they do. Right. And uh-huh. that I mean and then there's their their patio is killer. Okay. The artwork is dope. I was just like, I was pleasantly surprised by just falling in the half acre. Yeah, I was uh, thought about going up there on was it Sunday because the World Cup was yeah. happening and they were playing with the patio open. But um, buddy Sergio, I don't know if he watched it at home or if he went there, but he was supposed to invite me and he didn't. <laughs> so I don't know what happened there. I tell you something, man. Making beers like that are reminiscent of cocktails or reminiscent of wines is a you know that's a cool thing to do because mm-hmm. it's still just a four percent beer. Yeah. But the the flavor ride is just so bizarre that it's it's fun. Cool. Yeah. So so cheers to those guys, man. Nice. Uh, you mentioned Maplewood. That was my only spot I ended up hitting up this past week. Oh, you week. went to the Maple Room. I went to the Maple Room. Uh, went over there Sunday afternoon. You know since. I wasn't called to go watch the World <laughs> Cup. <laughs> Sergio, he's got his head down over this. So I just want you to know that. Uh, so I went over there in the afternoon. I just figured I was trying to decide. I know we were we were recently talking about Vice District. I was like, do I want to bike all the way downtown? And it was pretty hot. So I was like, I'm going to go to Maplewood. Yeah. It's not that far, and it's farther than my normal spots of like Onto or Goose, the Great Central kind of those locations. So. Right. Uh, made it over there. It wasn't busy, but I've heard like also complaints from other people that that place is loud. Oh yeah, right. The music they like blast their music there, right? Funny. Uh, and they were definitely it was turned up, but it was fine. I was digging whatever they were playing, but man. <laughs> but if you be- weren't digging it, yeah. But because the music was so loud, there was a group of people playing Uno. They were the loudest people. <laughs> At any place you could ever go to, the Maple Room is about the size of your typical living room, kitchen kind of area in Chicago. Like, if you combined it's, your two rooms, it's probably about that, like in most, like, Chicago apartments. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. This was, They were, like, level 11 <laughs> at, like, 4 in the afternoon oh, on man. Sunday playing Uno. And it was like, crap. <laughs> I'm the old man over here. Oh, man. Just let me have my beer. Can you guys bring it down a tad? A, and it just was, a scotch? Can you bring it down a scotch? And it wasn't even busy, but you add in like mm-hmm. the music. They often they rock it loud there. I've only been once. Okay, it was a Sunday night, so okay. So this is funny to me because like you're right. It's a, it's it's a rather small space, yeah. and they probably there's like way too lit for this <laughs> last space. <huh? laughs> Uh, but I ended up having to, I had a sample of their Husky Pants 4. Right on. Which is just whatever one of their hazy IPAs brewed with different hops. Yeah. You're out of names, naming them numbers. Yeah, they go, um, yeah, uh, Son of Juice, Juice, mm-hmm. Husky Pants. Mm-hmm. And, all right, what do we call this one? Well, we can't call it Husky Pants. If right, Husky Pants 2, <laughs> Husky Pants 3. Uh, so I had a little taste of that. Uh. It was good, but even at a little taste for the afternoon, it was kind of like too much for, what was it, like Saturday, Sunday was like 90-something out there. So biking over there, I was like, I wanted a little pills. I was going, and they were out of the pills because it makes sense. It's hot. Everyone's probably ordering that. 
It's cool that they got options that can overwhelm you, though. Because mm-hmm. somebody went in there and had a bad 90-degree day, and they wanted to be overwhelmed by, like, one beer. Yeah. And they were like, oh, we got we got this thing for you. <laughs> we got this thing over here for you. Uh, and then I ended up getting a pint of the Crushinator. Right on. Which you can get in cans. That was a great beer. I, like, uh, sipped on that for a while and just kind of booked stuff up on my phone and tried to tune out the Uno players. Oh <laughs> I tell you, they were... um. They on your uh, on your lanyard at uh, North Naperville Elf Fest, there were like four tickets for um for cocktails and the cocktails were like made by Maple. Oh yeah, oh, but I, it was it was too the line was too long. I just couldn't get there. I there. was tempted. I, I need to go in there with a couple people or one of those times where I've like I've had all the beers because they have a lot of non beer options. Yeah. Yeah, and I, all, I, I feel like they're a distillery too. I, I want to say that, right? Maybe I think a lot of their cocktails are like frozen drinks yeah. too. So okay. that would have been the way to go yeah. on a Sunday afternoon, like a little frozen grape drink, whatever. I saw someone had it; it looked nice. Yeah. So, but I love these corridor glasses. By the way, we drink in the, uh, <laughs> the Fooder eighteen out of the uh, the corridor stemware. Yeah, yeah, it looks nice. Fantastic stemware. Um, so that was my only stop. Uh, Besides drinking some uh, Crystal Lake brewing on on a boat, right so on, that was nice, right on. That um, was a good photo. Did you hit the uh, lake? I was on the I, I hit the river this weekend. Uh, we, I didn't go on the lake. We were on the lake, and then took the boat onto the river. There you go. And then we could only go so far. The water was too high, and we couldn't make it under a bridge, so we had to turn back around. Gotcha. But we were out on the lake and river. Crystal Lake on the lake, though. Yeah. That's a good look. I, I see what you did there. Yeah. Uh, it was their Golden Ale. It's a pretty solid beer, like great yeah. summer kind of beer. They were there, and I was hoping to get over to them, but then I didn't. Mm-hmm. There was a band called Six to Midnight, and okay. they were playing like all 90s. So I was I was there for that. I, oh, sat, nice. I sat in this really big, <laughs> this gigantic <laughs> lawn chair, and I just listened to music. Yeah. Nice. Uh, so those were our stops this past week. Oh, one more thing, man. Shout out to um Goddamn Square Roots Fest. Yeah. In Lincoln Square. Yeah. Um I closed out the weekend there. Oh, you did make it. You I made did. it there. Okay. Yeah. I totally forgot about that. Oh, but um dude, so the uh what was it? The special tappings tent was where it was at. Okay. Cuz mm. then they had something from like dungeons from Half Acre. Mm. Oh, and then they had the creek. So like this week I didn't cash in my dovetail dollars <laughs> yeah. to get the creek, but Oh, but I got to try the creek at the at uh what you call it at Square Roots. What was how was it? Man, this is a fantastic time to be a beer drinker in Chicago, man. Okay. Because between like you know, well everybody's got a bunch of like like we talk about the mixed culture stuff, or we talk mm-hmm. about you know just the um and that thing's like one hundred percent spontaneous fermented. Yeah, I don't think I don't think I personally dug it. I thought it was great. You can get like you know any any um any of those wild ales that can hit me with like. Both tart fruit and ripe fruit. Yeah. Right. I get excited about that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I just don't want one note. I want I want I want a mix of things in there. Okay. So I thought it was great. How does yeah. it compare to the goose beer? Because um, we I were think... gonna drink them both. We talked about that. Or it's weird because I feel like the goose beer has more of a neutral profile than that one does. I think that mm. one's just a lot more bold. But they do add the ballots and cherries to like almost like twenty three hundred pounds of ballots and cherries. Yeah. So it kind of leans in that direction. You know. Yeah, so this one's a little more in check. That one's just like full on enjoy yourself. This is a fruit, Bel- <laughs> a fruit Belgian, fantastic nice. beer. It was really nice. Okay. So um, let's try to do that next week, man. I tell you, if I don't lose, if I don't use my dovetail dollars in the next week, I think I'm gonna lose them. Yeah. So I gotta get over there. That's the that's the part I don't love about <laughs> these. Like you buy your beers ahead of time. Yeah. And if you forget, you have to go to these places twice. So. Right. So I look up and I'm like. Oh well, yeah, I got I got forty eight hours. I, of course, I'll make it to Dovetail, mm-hmm. and then I didn't. Yeah. So now now I'm on the clock. Yeah, and they're gonna <laughs> sell your beer, and your Dovetail dollars are worthless. They should let you at least then use your dollars for beer. Like, oh, I didn't make it in. I like, I got in a car accident, and I couldn't like get here. Can I use my dollars for beer now? Like, be let like, me redeem them. I'm like, well, we'll give you a tour, and we'll give you a sampler. <laughs> yeah, we'll get water. <laughs> Drink this water that we uh, <laughs> that we replicated from uh, from from Germany. And we're like, nice. oh fuck. All right, so you made it to Square Roots just for a, just for a minute. Yeah, I think that. Well, it, honestly, it was two parties, man. Because you know, Taste of Chicago when I was a kid was like 
the Holy Grail, right? Because when I was a kid, fireworks, uh, Fourth, it always ended on Fourth of July. Yeah, and they slid it back. Now. Yeah, because it was, and so it was literally the biggest party of the year yeah. before Lollapalooza showed up. It was Taste and Fireworks Weekend. Um, oh, but then like when I went to River River Taste of River North, and then this is basically Taste of Lincoln Square. Okay. Right? When I went to those neighborhood parties, that's when I realized how whack. Taste of Chicago yeah, was, okay. right? Because no one really lives necessarily, like, in the loop. Yeah. So, like, I mean, just the, the quality of food and then, like, the people and the energy and then, like, the music choices. Like, it was just a lot more, like, neighborhood-centric vibe that is just, like, way cooler than anything you'll find downtown, unfortunately. Yeah. Or not, whatever. Downtown <laughs> is supposed to be the way. It's downtown, you know? It's not supposed to be a neighborhood. It's a central business district. Right, yeah. But if you live here and, you you know, you go to parties like square roots mm -hmm. so that was a great party cool it was a good way to end the weekend all right see i thought about making it over to um windy city smoke out yeah but that's a 45 five dollar ticket and if you don't care about the country bands it's like all country right and you still have to buy food and beer so um all country and the food is all barbecue right but you yeah. have to buy the food right yeah because you're paying for the music right that's so right because it's like music first i need a can i wear headphones and not and just come in for the food. <laughs> it was a tad bad. It was like a disdain for me. No, I just like I just want the barbecue. Uh, like, that's true, and because they got pit masters from everywhere at that thing. Yeah. Not to like say the band sucks, like, but like I kind of just wanted to come in for some barbecue, like kind of what rib fest kind of thing yeah. in Naperville. So <laughs> I need an option, like an early session. Like you got to be out before the band comes on. You got to wear this wristband. If we see you, we kick you out. Windy City Smokeout is probably my favorite name for a party. <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's multi-use. It will. I see at some point it being used for something else. Yeah, yeah. You might see a reinvention. <laughs> That's a good. Make go green. <laughs> That's a great name for a party, man. Windy, Windy City Smokeout. <laughs> Cool. Oh, man. Well, that brings us into this coming week, some of the events, some of the things you should be checking out. Uh, what do we got on the calendar? There's a couple events happening. Uh, the big one is probably Pitchfork, right? Oh, man. Is Pitchfork this weekend? It's this weekend. Oh, fuck. You got tickets to Pitchfork? I don't. I do not either. So I won't be going. <laughs> but Goose Island yeah. has that beer that they did with. The Japan. Japanades? Japan Japan not Japanades. Japanoids? Japanoids. Japanoids. <laughs> This is why we ain't got tickets, <laughs> <I> man. <know. laughs> they don't even know the band. They're not invited. Yeah. But then it's weird because that band's from L.A., but they're called like the Japanoids or something. Yeah. Yeah. And they're doing like a lager. I'm sure it'll be on tap at 312 Day and over at the Goose Island Fulton Pub. Yeah. Pitchfork yeah. historically has always been very solid. Mm -hmm. um, Run the Jewels, uh, Chance the Rapper. Um, who's this year is going to be um who who's that Raphael Sadiq, uh, Shaka Khan uh, okay. who's from Chicago she'll be there too. Right. Yeah. Nice. So that's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And that's um that's got better beer than um just about every other music festival. Big music fest, <laughs> right? Yeah, because you go to that you go to that same park for North Coast the beer's not the same. Okay. Yeah, and you go to Lollapalooza. Uh, the food's good at Lollapalooza because it's uh, Chowtown, and they pull a bunch of chefs. Yeah. The beer's kind of shit at, at Lala. Well, the beer is shit. You, I, end up, I end up drinking way more wine than beer at Lala. And it's for a lot of kids that are underage, like under 21, so they're smoking weed and drinking Red Bull. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. And also that. <laughs> so uh, check that out. Try that uh, Goose Island beer. Virtue Cider will be there, of course. I'm sure. Um, Saturday is this event called Night at the Zoo. All oh, right on. It's a 21 and over party at Lincoln Park Zoo. This isn't a beer festival. No? But you can go to the zoo, and there'll be food and beer and wine to purchase. But it's really just like DJs and music and kind of like a party at the zoo. Because um, they, they do a beer fest there, so right. this is different from they that. They do what? The uh, winter one, the brew, brew lights. Brew lights, and then um, there's a... Um... Blue Dog Events event there right. during the summer, too. So this is just called Night at the Zoo. Party at Lincoln Park Zoo um, from 6.30 to 11 p.m. on Saturday. When is the Brewfest Partners Belgian cruise? I want to I say that's coming up. 
Ooh, the Belgian one. I don't know. Is this weekend July 22nd? Yes. All right. It's Sunday. Sunday. It is Sunday. Okay. Yeah. That's a good one, I think, right? Because you were on that one. I went to the Belgian one. It's it's good. They, if you, you kind of need maybe one or two people that don't have Belgian beers because mm-hmm. you do get a little, you need a break, just like any beer fest where it's like you were drinking that, uh, what, peach peach bottle share oh, last yeah. weekend. And I was asking for a break and they were like, no, we right. had a beer with apricot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's your break. <laughs> so sometimes you just need like, can I just have like something to cut through this? So is it apricot or apricot? By apricot. The way? Okay. Uh, I had a beer with apricot. Yeah. So it's, they have at the Belgian Fest, sometimes they have like uh, a few things that are a little different or uh, some creeks, some different things, but sometimes you need like, there's no like IPA to just like smash your palate yeah. and then come back to it but it's definitely a good cruise and the boat is great um it's well organized um yeah it's good yeah and then um they're going all like doubles triples quads yes. lambics like you're saying goes like that's the best thing when you can Wild walk stars. up and be like let me have chimay blue let me have chimay yeah. red all right white and then you'd like move on to the next thing like let me see this progression each time yeah. through these so yeah, I think of all the ones, that's a brew, that's a uh, Brewfest Partners event. Kurt Foreman, we've had on the show. We talked about this party before. That looks like a. Um, that's a that's a nooner. No, sorry, that's a uh, one thirty start. Okay. That's a sixty nine dollar ticket. Okay. I think that's probably, as far as tap list goes, and then they're they're bringing out the the Belgian chocolate, the waffles, and the cheese. Right. I think of the ones they do, that's like the jewel of the ones they do. Mm-hmm, right. I that's think the, so. that's their premier one because they do it like, like every week all summer or something like that. Yeah. Every there's like three or four Sundays they end yeah. up doing them. Yeah. Nice. So that's this weekend. So that's Sunday. Also Sunday is an event called Sunday Fun Day at Beguile. I think they do these regularly, but it's yoga, empanadas, and beer floats. I'd be down for some yoga. And I mean empanadas, of course. Um, tickets are twenty dollars. So Where's this? Beguile. Beguile upstairs. Right on. Um, so you get to do yoga, and then you get, I think, with the twenty dollars, gets you some beer, and yeah. then you have to buy the empanadas, and you probably, if you want more to drink. Yeah. That's cool. I used to frown upon yoga, but now I'm just trying to get it wherever I can. I'm trying to get exercise wherever I can. And if you can combine it with drinking and eating, that's a win. Yeah. You know, you get up, you do your yoga. Get your downward dog, get your warrior and all that other <laughs> shit, and then boom, let's get these empanadas. Right. Let's get this beer and Santa Ron Brews there, too, so you can get their stuff there, too. Oh, oh yeah. nice. Okay. So that's a Sunday. There's a link on Beguile's page, but it's from noon to three. Right on. So, yeah. That's the few things that I saw. I don't know if you have anything else. Man, I saw this one thing, man. It is uh, Slick Rick. Okay. Slick Rick the Ruler. At, um, there's a venue called Out of Space. That is uh, not too far from uh, Temperance. I think Temperance bought the space. It's like an event space. Oh, cool. Next to Temperance. So you can go see Slick Rick and the Cool Kids. That's a Chicago outfit. Cool Kids are great. Yeah, for $25, man, from 6 to 10 on Saturday. Nice. I'm excited about that. I'm going to try to go to that. It's not too far from you either. Yeah, I'm right up there now. That's that's the kind of thing I got to do. Awesome. Yeah. 25 bucks, Slick Rick and Cool Kids. That's a win. Yeah, I think so. And a brewery. Yeah. Yeah, you won. All right. I might think I might see if Maeve wants to go. Check that out. Do it. Uh, all right, cool. Well, before we get out of here, was there any beer news? Anything happening that's worth noting? Um, we were talking to the Goose Island guys, and they bike. They have a bike club, and they biked from Goose Island all the way out to Three Floyds and 18th Street, if you can believe that. So this is like we're talking like Northwest Indiana from yeah, I've done that. Northwest downtown. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, you can appreciate this, but this to a normal person, this sounds ridiculous. <laughs> It's like this is bar. Do they yeah. bike back? Or and, then, they, and then they bike okay. back. Because there's yeah. half the people end up like training it back. They go to Flossmore and train it back or whatever. Yeah, that's true. Or eighteenth that eighteenth Street. I think there's a train, right? Yeah, yeah. It's right there. So, but if you're hardcore, you got to bike back. Man, some people just don't like the you fill up on beer and then you're kind of woozy. It's like no, you keep you buy a six pack to go, and you drink back. <laughs> I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm in Rogers Park, right? Just only like eight miles from downtown, north of downtown, and I stopped like four times from downtown to Rogers Park. So, hardcore is the word to describe mm-hmm. going to Indiana on a bike. And that, if you're powered by Dry Hop Three One Two, you make it anywhere. <laughs> man, um, so that was cool uh, in the news. 
Oh, but then um, the big news is that uh, apparently Solemn Oath is uh, going to be expanding to Logan Square. Oh, they have a spot, a yeah. location. So in the window in a storefront on a little strip mall off of like Armitage is this sign that says, hey, you know, blah, 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 public notice, blah, 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 Solemn Oath. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. So it sounds like, you know, because we were talking about them, like, I think Three Floyds and Salamoth are the two crews that are always rumored to have, you know, a space. Mm -hmm. I mean, the de facto uh, Three Floyds tap room is the one next door to uh, Asheval, mm -hmm. Lone Wolf. Lone Wolf, yeah. Lone Wolf. Because you, you, you roll in Lone Wolf and you go, you'll find Dark Lord on tap. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Like, they, they have, like, permanent Floyds taps, like, uh, way too many. Right. Um, oh, but then, yeah. They because and they've always rumored to have their own tap room and now Solomon Oak looks like, according to the public notice in the window, they're going to be uh, expanding the Logan Square. So Armitage and what? So was Richmond. Richmond. What's nineteen nineteen fifty five North Richmond. I don't know how far west Richmond is. It's, I'm drawing a blank is, on that. Uh, I'm guessing somewhere between. Um, is Damon fifth? Damon's thirteen, right? No, nah, Damon's uh, two thousand. 2000. And Western is 2400. 2400. So I'm thinking somewhere between like Western and Kedzie, that'd be my guess. Okay. Something like that. Western. Yeah. Hmm. So good for them. I like their beer. I like their, you know. Yeah. They got cool artwork. They got a thing about Vikings, though. They dig them. They're like, they dig they're tough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Cool. Yeah, well, but... keep a lookout for that. We'll probably be sharing more information on that as we hear about it as we find out some stuff and we'll definitely be uh drinking over there yeah for yeah. sure yeah awesome well we should get out of here nick where can people find you get in touch when we're not recording here right on man i'm on twitter at nicosio and i'm on twitter at brad chicago beer pass is on twitter at chicago beer pass we mentioned the instagram we try to post there as much as possible so check that out lots of we've kind of a banner facebook man Gotta we get, have. Gotta get back on it. I try to share some events there, but uh, or if we go to an event and there's lots of photos, you don't want to just dump them on Instagram. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we're on Facebook, but Instagram, we're trying to always share those sexy beer photos. So check that out. Hit that. Hit that heart. Right. <laughs> <laughs> for all those sexy people out there, this one's for, this one's for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be back uh, next week with another episode. Take care. Cheers. <laughs>